If you asked me which class I'd be maining once we finally get Diablo 4 dumped into our hands in what seems like an eternity from now, my answer would unequivocally be the Barbarian. It is the class that resonates with me the most and the one that I want to take to 100 first and also want to experience most of the content first time with. However, if you asked me which class I think would have the craziest builds, the insanest clear time and the highest number once the dust settles and once a lot of people have gotten Diablo 4 in their hands, my answer would be the rogue. Today, we're gonna look at a build that allows you to squeeze as much as possible violence, speed, and momentum Raul! out of a class and to make the most lethal, efficient killing machine possible. So starting us off, this class exemplifies all of the qualities that you want in a fast hitting killing machine. We are using high mobility skills, which allow us to dart around the battlefield. We're combining our skills with a lot of AOE effects, which allow us to chew through trash very fast. And then we're also using very rampable nukes, which we can use on elites and boss enemies, giving us the same killing efficiency that we have in clearing packs and trash and moving around the map, but also being able to just dump a huge amount of damage onto one or two potential targets, and thereby also netting us very fast kills on those targets last but not least we are utilizing extreme low cooldowns and once you learn to play this because let me be clear this is a learning experience learning to play the class like this it plays like nothing else that diablo 4 has to offer you will realize that this high octane style of play and essentially trying to utilize super low cooldowns to dump as many skills as possible onto enemies in the shortest amount of time while moving around the battlefield is a little game all on its own i mean you're playing rogue playing diablo 4 that's basically what's happening here let's talk skill and skill choices first of all we start off with puncture which is our non-energy using skill essentially once you start perfecting playing this build and you will notice this yourself after a couple of hours with this class you'll notice that this skill itself is more just something that you use to essentially force enemies to run at you or sometimes just top yourself off with a little bit of energy or something like that you will not be using this to deal a huge amount of damage it also slows enemies with every third dagger that you essentially throw uh, and then if you invest into primary puncture it actually also ricochets on the third one which means you can also just hit a bunch of enemies so pretty good overall now for our first meaty skill and the first thing that we should be looking at is twisting blades now basically how twisting blades works first of all is essentially when you prime the skill it dumps two daggers into the enemy that you target and then what happens is that causes that enemy to take additional damage from you because it has the daggers in them and for as long as the daggers is in that enemy it will take additional damage and then after one and a half seconds the daggers will dislodge from that enemy and travel back to you so the idea here is obviously to use twisting blades on an enemy and then to create some distance between you and that enemy because once those blades dislodge they will come flying back and in flying back they will deal damage to every enemy that they hit on their way back to you this is really awesome now this is further on better when you start putting some additional enhancements onto twisting blade in the case of enhanced twisting blade you get more damage on that trip back and then in the case of advanced twisting blade what happens is it lowers the cooldowns for of all your skills for every enemy hit on the way back up to a certain cap so this is a little you sort of like play style that you have to adopt you have to essentially hit stuff put a twisting blade on them and then yeah we have some other skills which i'll explain which will help you move around but the point is you have to create some distance between you and the target that you put the blades into to really capitalize on the usability of this skill next up we have the skill that's going to help you create that distance once you put some blades into something's back with twisting blades and that is shadow step basically our shadow step works as you move through enemies and you hit the, your target from behind and this actually gives you unstoppable once you hit shadow step but once you upgrade this with methodical shadow step it's also going to let you stun your target for two seconds the one that you basically hit the third skill that we're going to talk about here in this sort of like trifecta is shadow imbuement and this is really i would say the secret source of this build to a degree because this is what's going to let you have really really fast clears of groups of enemies because in the case of twisting blades and in the case of shadow step those are target focused things you are attacking one enemy and putting daggers into them and you're shadow stepping onto one enemy so in the case of shadow imbuement how imbuements on the rogue work is that you have a couple 
couple of different ones you have poison you have ice and you have shadow poison as you imagine basically puts a dot on enemies and uh, ice freezes those enemies and basically crowd controls them and shadow is the aoe version of this where essentially you curse an enemy and then after a certain amount of time if you kill the enemy within the allotted time that explodes and actually deals shadow damage to all the enemies around it now once you actually activate blended shadow imbuement on this as well those shadow explosions are also going to apply vulnerable to the enemies that they hit which is another good thing because vulnerable on enemy makes them take more damage and we're going to have some additional ways in which we tap on vulnerable enemies and how we can deal more damage to them the fifth skill that we're going to talk about is death trap and this is our ultimate you have some choices here i particularly like death trap due to the fact that we are already mixing it up in marillions with enemies so oftentimes if it's a tough group of enemies around you you can simply dump the death trap right there and then after like a second it'll prime and activate and essentially you will deal a whole bunch of the enemies that you know a whole bunch of damage rather to the enemies that are caught within that trap now further on when you upgrade death trap with prime death trap that's also going to create a vacuum effect where it's going to pull enemies into the middle of that death trap which is going to just make it easier for your shadow imbuement procs to fire off and just deal more damage to them now you'll notice that i've left one skill unselected here i've given you five the sixth possible skill that i would suggest for you to take is dash but really there's you know it's dealer's choice here. you can take whatever you want i did mention though that this build has insane mobility and the ability to move through the area quite fast and i have to be honest dash has a big role to play there and it's one of the reasons why you are so mobile so you absolutely should consider that as your sixth possible skill to slot in but in the end i leave the choice up to you and uh, you know you can experiment there are however a whole bunch of passive which i absolutely encourage you to also pick up especially the last one because that kind of also makes this build sing so the first one being weapon mastery which depending on which weapons you're using which melee weapons you're using is going to give you different buffs um in the case of uh, i think probably daggers would be your best choice due to the fact that you have a huge amount of opening up damage on healthy enemies meaning enemies near full life but again all of these buffs are good we also have exploit which basically just lets you deal more damage to full life enemies as well as more damage to low life enemies that's essentially what this means so it's going to help you finish off near death enemies a lot quicker and it's also just going to let you tank a lot more hp off of enemies that are you know brand new and basically entering the fight now malice is also really good here because this increases your damage to vulnerable and we are at making enemies vulnerable with the shadow improvement and you know explosions that we're causing the whole time and so this is just going to let you capitalize on that additional damage in the fourth you know one we should pick here is absolutely shadow crash which basically says that whenever you deal shadow damage to an enemy there's a chance that you will stun them again this is phenomenal when these shadow imbuement explosions go off each one of them like if it hits eight enemies that stun is calculated eight times so you won't stun all eight of them you won't stun none of them but you'll stun some of them and that's really good last but not least and this is the one that i mentioned which is kind of like an auto include you gotta get this in here is that consuming shadows lets you actually regain or regen energy from shadow kills now when we start talking about the combat flow and the order that you should be using your skills this is where it gets complicated because this is really one of those things like you can see the footage running in the background right now of me basically pulling off the combo but the point is this is one of those classes that you have to play and you have to get used to playing it you're gonna have to maybe rejig some of the skills on your taskbar to see which ones you're using with your mouse and which ones you're using with one two three and four whatever because you're gonna have to find a comfortable style where you can fire these off in order but pretty much what you're doing is whenever you see a bunch of enemies you can ping them with puncture or something like that and basically make them come towards you you can use that as your opener or something like that and at this point in time you're gonna shadow imbue now when, once you shadow imbue your next two attacks are going to apply the shadow effect so at this point in time you're going to shadow step that's going to apply then you're going to go you know twisting blades that's going to apply and at this point in time you're going to move away from the enemies by essentially either shadow stepping again or dashing out of the pack to another side of the screen or something and then as soon as a couple of seconds pass the blades are going to dislodge and they're going to come flying back to you and uh, they're going to deal a whole bunch of you know damage to enemies now if that first group that you attacked was a you know elite pack or a boss or something like that then what you're also going to do is you're also going to mix death trap into the shit here and that's just going to deal a whole bunch of additional damage now 
This all might not sound super impressive, but what you are going to notice when you do it yourself and what you've seen in the background of this footage is because we have skills which basically give us back energy the entire time. And we also have twisting blade where when this shit flies through stuff, it's gonna lower the cooldowns of your other active cooldowns. You're gonna have shadow imbuement coming back like all the time. You're gonna have shadow step coming back like all the time. And yes, you're gonna have your ultimate death trap like coming back all the time a lot faster because those cooldowns are getting chunked all the time, which will just get you to dump them down on the ground again, use those skills again, and this engine just keeps on fucking going so as soon as you run into a large enough pack and let me tell you something this build loves high density dungeons high density areas where you have a lot of enemies that you can essentially feed to this engine and you're just gonna chew through them like a fucking blender we also need to cover specializations which is a unique thing to the role class this is essentially your class ability and this allows you to pick between three different specializations which essentially augment the way in which you play your rogue in a little way now the first one being combo points the second one being inner sight and the third one being preparation inner sight best suits this build above the other the other two because of the fact that you know more energy just means more efficiency and more damage for you basically how inner sight works is it will mark certain enemies for you in groups of enemies and as you kill those enemies Enemies, it will fill up a gauge once you fill up this gauge then essentially for four seconds you have unlimited energy and this is the time when you go buck wild now last but not least before i let you go we need to talk some legendary aspects we also need to look at some potential upgrades that you can be getting from the codex of power as you start leveling up now the first two legendary aspects we're going to talk about i would consider nearly essential to this build now don't get me wrong you can play this without these two legendary aspects, but it will not perform as efficient as I've made it out to be, but also not as efficient as what you've seen in the background running the footage because I had both of these aspects in the background footage when I recorded it. Now, the first one is something specifically for Shadow Step. And this basically gives you an additional charge of Shadow Step, which is huge because although you do have a huge amount of cooldown reduction having access to two shadow steps at the start of every fight lets you pull off your combo at least ramp up a lot faster this also says that when you kill an enemy with shadow step it refunds a charge and this is the goat part of this legendary aspect because again as long as there are enemies and as long as you are intelligently using shadow step to get the kills you will never run out of shadow step so this is fantastic also at the same time not just because it's not enough but this also ramps up consequent shadow steps with more damage so this is all in all a fantastic legendary aspect and you will definitely notice the difference in a build that runs this and doesn't run it but runs the same skills as i've shown the second one we need to look at is Twisting Blades Centric. And this one, in my opinion, is probably the most important one for you to get. But the good news is that this is not dependent on you finding a legendary weapon with this on. This one is actually present in the Codex of Power, which means you could just go to whichever dungeon in the game or whichever activity you need to do to get it, and you can get access to the base version of this. But basically what this does is your Twisting Blades, when they return to you, they actually orbit you for a short amount of time, and basically they deal some damage to the enemies around them. Now based on the distance of the blades returned the orbit damage increases up to you know a certain value and of course this number can scale up as you can see in the tooltip here it can go as high as 40 percent but the point here being that this is going to give you even more additional damage because what happens is in my example before as i explained you jump into a pack you by shadow stepping onto them you twisting blaze them you shadow step out of that pack into another group of enemies now when that blade comes back and actually orbits around you it's going to deal a huge amount of damage to those enemies around you and potentially mop up a lot of them and bearing in mind that you're also going to be mixing in shadow uh sorry shadow imbuement and all of this in there as well so there's just going to be a lot going on damage wise and you know the enemies are going to pay for it as mentioned in the codex of power there are some fantastic upgrades which will further on drive the power of this first and foremost just one defensive aspect that i pretty much have mentioned in every single build i've made so far because i just think it's really good and look there's possibly better ones out there that we haven't seen yet but this is just really good for whenever you have to go up against packs or bosses or something like that and that is of course aspect of the protector 
this gives you a barrier that absorbs a certain amount of damage every time you go up against an elite and this can proc every 30 seconds so if it's a prolonged fight which by the way shouldn't happen with this build then you're going to be able to get it to proc multiple times now next up we have to talk about aspect of corruption because what this does is it says that your imbuement skill aka shadow imbuement which we use on this build as a 20 percent this number can scale of course increased potency against vulnerable enemies now remember your shadow imbuement explodes and that causes vulnerable now that means that any follow-up shadow imbuement explosions are going to be able to deal more damage to them and again because you cycle cooldown so fast with this build that's going to be no problem that gets us onto aspect of unstable imbuements and as you imagine this has even more augments for our imbuements this says that when casting an imbuement skill you trigger the explosion around yourself applying the effect right of shadow imbuement and dealing that shadow damage of the same type now basically what this means is that when you activate shadow imbuement it's not just that you create the shadow effect on your next two attacks it actually procs once on you so this essentially gives you three procs per activation of shadow imbuement and this is huge once you start moving through packs and you activate this in a cluster of enemies and then move out of that cluster because that's just gonna once the twisting blade edges out of that it's gonna pull through all those enemies kill them that's gonna fire off more shadow imbuement explosions you know it's a fucking shit show and then last but not least we have ravenous aspect here which says that killing a vulnerable enemy grants you a percentage based increased energy regeneration for four seconds so again just capitalizing on the fact that we are making enemies vulnerable and when we kill those vulnerable enemies it's going to flood us with additional energy which will just empower our further on you know ability to essentially funnel out a huge amount of damage and that right there is the shadow twist rogue this build was slightly longer than the other ones I've made up until now. And I'd say it's probably due to two factors. One, I'm super excited about this build. Again, like I said, even though I'm maining Barbarian, I'm really looking forward to building this in the full game and actually running it myself. I had a fuckload of fun with this in the betas. It was huge. It was fun. It was flashy. It was super efficient and just overall, just really, really, really fun to play. I think I said fun like 15 times now. The second reason as well is that because there is a lot going on here, uh, I think that it's one of those situations where I try to explain as much nuance about the build and the options and the, you know, the mental gymnastics and all of that. But it's really one of those things that you need to start like sort of build for yourself and then start experimenting with and playing. At least it was that way for me. I started putting together some of the parts in the first beta weekend and then I would consider I perfected it in the second weekend and in that time i spent a lot of time theory crafting but i also spent a lot of time figuring out which you know order you should use the skills in and all of that sort of stuff and again it's something that came with practice if i watched and i i think this is this is one of the builds where this is the most true if i watch someone else play this it would look easy or it would look like not as great or you know whichever thing you want to attach onto that but then when you actually put it into motion you try it out yourself it's gonna fucking blow your mind i absolutely if any of my builds if you're thinking of trying them this is the one that i encourage you to try the most especially if you're gonna try rogue because it's just it's it's nuts but uh let me know in the comments down below which class you are planning on maining first when diablo launches if it is rogue what are you going to be doing are you going to be playing ranged rogue which i also think has a fucking place in the meta by the way but more than all i just want you to have a fantastic morning afternoon evening wherever you are in the world until next video fucking cheers